Thanksgiving is here and it's time to make gravy. So I'm going to show you a couple of quick tips and tricks and just to give you a little understanding of gravy itself. Let's get after it. Gravy is not hard. In culinary terms, it's called a velouté. In cooking, there's six mother sauces, bechamel, espanol, tomato, hollandaise, velouté, and demi-gloss. And so this one is just a, it's a staple that you need to know. And if, there's a couple things we're going to talk about just to give you an understanding of how to do it and make it a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and get the butter, get the butter melting. In order to make a roux, a perfect roux, you would need to, you need to weigh your butter and weigh your flour. So if you weigh them and they're, and they're the exact same weight, then what happens uh, with the combination of the butter and flour that every particle of butter has an equal mating particle of flour. And so when they bond really nicely together, um, that's what helps make a beautiful roux. So what happens if you have too much oil or too much fat in your roux? Well, in the end, your, your finished product will have just probably a tiny little layer of, of fat on top because it had nothing to mix with and emulsify with. So, uh, so, that, so that's one sign that maybe you're you had too much fat in your roux. Now, what happens if you don't have enough fat or you, you have too much flour in your roux? When that happens, your flour doesn't have, doesn't have enough fat to dissolve in. And so you're going to have this little bit of kind of pasty, grainy texture and taste of undeveloped flour when your product, when your gravy or soup or whatever you're making is done. So if you really want to, to do it right, Weigh your butter, weigh your flour, and do an equal part of each, and you'll have a perfect roux. So I weighed my butter, and I'm gonna, I weighed my flour, and so they're both going in. A couple things to just debunk. I, I see lots of people cooking, because we, we cook here with a lot of new people, and a lot of people add their flour little bits at a time. Well, the thing is, flour is going to cook, and I'm going to show you a few things about that. And so right now, we have what we call a blonde roux. It's equal parts by weight, butter, and flour mixed together, and that is a blonde roux. Its color is light in color, like blonde. A lot of people add their flour little bits at a time. But if you think about the cooking process, when you put the first bit of flour in, it starts cooking first. And so if you sprinkle more flour in a little bit later and more flour a little bit later, then your flour is cooking at all these different time frames. So you have some flour that's cooked a lot and some flour that's barely cooked at all. And and so it's better to add all of your flour at one time, stir it in, and cook. From here, control your heat. You are in control of what's happening in the pan. If your heat is too hot, it can, you can burn your roux very quickly. And for a great southern gravy and most gravies, you're already ready to start tempering in your chicken broth or your chicken stock or your turkey stock, whatever, whatever you have to make your gravy. But I like to develop the flavor a little bit for, especially when it, for turkey, if for, since it's Thanksgiving, I like to develop a little bit of that nutty aroma and a little extra flavor by cooking the flour. The more you cook the flour, the darker it's going to get. The color will change. You'll get some browning. And that browning is a caramelization of some of the food sugars in the butter and also the carbohydrate in the flour. And to me, that's flavor I don't want to pass up. Another common thing to look for when it comes to making a gravy or especially using roux, roux can burn easily. And so you want to make sure you stir all of your corners all the way around. If you miss a corner, and it burns, typically the corner that's closest to you is the one that everybody misses. You don't end up stirring it because you can't see it. If you're lean back here, I can't see this back corner, and so it gets missed. And when it gets missed, it burns. And we say when you burn something, it gets bitter. And once it gets bitter, it never gets better. So if you get a little bit of burn in this corner and you think you can stir it in and it's just going to go away, it actually won't. It'll just get worse and make the whole thing trash. So you can already see that I've developed some different color with this roux. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, if you go much darker than this, you might start getting into like the gumbo style of roux, which is not what I'm trying to get to today. So I am going to turn my heat down just a little bit, and I'm going to get ready to start tempering in the chicken broth. So there is my brown roux. So I have my blonde roux, 
and I have my brown roux. And now I'm going to get ready to temper. So tempering is where you slowly bring two things together that don't normally like to mix. Really, flour and water, they don't like to mix, but now the flour is dissolved in fat. It'll actually mix easier with the water, and that's our goal right now. But you have to be careful, because the first time that you add a little bit of stock, it's, it's going to get really steamy, and you want to be careful not to get burned. Right? Because you need to do this process slowly so that you don't get lumps in your gravy. So tempering is where you add a little bit. And again, just let that steam just get out of the way so you're safe. And then I'm going to mix that in. And to temper properly, every time you add liquid, you need to make sure that they are completely mixed together before you add the next round. Now, if you're, if you're worried, if it feels like you're, it's going too fast and you might burn it, there's no shame in just turning the flame off and taking control of your pan. I don't mind some heat. So I'm going to add my second round of chicken broth. Again, it's still pretty hot. When it steams up like that, just keep your hands and your face out of the way. And then here is where you can see that there might be little broken pieces of the roux. And this is your opportunity to smooth them out. If you don't smooth them out now and you added more liquid, those little broken pieces would turn into lumps. So you want to look, get it to look like this. Then add some more. And again, each round of broth that you add to this, you want to make sure it gets smooth and creamy before you add your next round of stock. And don't worry. Like most good things, it gets a little worse before it gets better. So mine was a, it looked lumpy and like something wasn't going to come out right. But if you just stick to the process, it's nice and smooth and creamy. And I'm going to add a little bit more stock and work that in. And then at some point, you'll get to the point where, at some point, it'll get creamy in here. And you'll realize that there's not really an opportunity for you to get lumps. We all, we call, I call this getting past the lump stage. So once I mix the rest of this stock in, I will be past the lump stage. And I'll be in this creamy stage where it allows you to add your liquid faster. You can add as much liquid as you want to now, and I'm not really worried about getting any of the lumps. At this point, I'll also turn my heat up. What's really important at this stage is to bring your gravy to a rolling boil. That's lots of bubbles into a full rolling boil because flour does not reach its full thickening capacity until it boils. So if you never bring this to a boil, you'll never know exactly how thick your gravy is. So you bring it to a full rolling boil, just to make sure that you know it's, it's hot and the, the flour will come to its full thickening capacity. Then you can turn it down to a simmer and, and you can adjust the, the, salt, the salt and pepper content, the seasoning. You can add herbs to it and you can also either thin it out if you wanted a little thinner gravy or if you want it thicker, you can just let it cook just a little bit longer. And so I am fine. I like this gravy to cook for at least five to ten minutes so that you can cook the flour, the kind of like raw flour taste out of it. Um, and sometimes if I have time, I like to cook it for an hour or two and really develop the flavor. And if I do that, I will have to add more chicken broth or stock along the way. So you want to stir it as it's coming to a boil as well. Because the thing about flour, when flour has it emulsified with the water, it likes to settle to the bottom and that's where burning can happen. And so as soon as the water comes to a rolling boil, the flour will emulsify with the water. They'll become completely one, and then the convective movement of the bubbles will actually help you stir, but it won't do all the stirring for you. You gotta have to be part of that too. Full rolling boil, turn my heat down to a simmer, give it some salt. I'm gonna, if I'm gonna use pepper on this one, I'm probably gonna use some white pepper so I don't have the, the specks and the flakes in my gravy, and I like the flavor of white pepper. And so there you have it. That is quick, velouté or gravy and make this for your Thanksgiving dinner, but hopefully you learn some of the principles behind it so that you can be successful no matter what gravy that you're making. Thanks for cooking with me today. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment if you use this recipe on your Thanksgiving dinner this year.